Okay. Here we have UBC Math 100 past final exam 2016, and we're looking at question number 11. Uh, first off, I'll give you a few minutes to read the question. Feel free to pause the video and take a look and see what it's talking about. Okay, hopefully you took a look. Here, if you read the question, you see we have sort of like a word problem, and you may even recognize it to be a sort of related rates problem, because in the second part here, we're trying to figure out um, uh, the rate of change of different lengths. But actually, in the first part, all we're trying to do is set up the problem. We're trying to describe the situation, as so that's what we're going to talk about right now. Okay, so the first thing is we have a street lamp of height L, and we have two people standing underneath it. So here's, let's see, here's going to be my street lamp. Again, it's going to be quite tall, and this length is L. And then we have the two people, so maybe I'll, you know, maybe they can be this tall. Okay, so here this is going to be H, and then this bigger length here is going to be L. Okay, then person A walks in a straight line at a constant speed away from the street lamp. Um, here's the ground, right? Yeah, so this means that we can say person A is walking to the left. It doesn't really matter left or right. One person's going to walk one way, and the other person's going to walk in the opposite direction, as you see from the question. So let's say person A walks to the left. Okay, so that means they're walking over here. They're going, you know, in this direction, and they're continuing to walk. So I'll say, you know, they're continuing to go this way, and I'll point that out with this arrow. Okay, they're continuing to walk. Then, one second later, B walks in a straight line at the same speed, but in the opposite direction. Okay, so B is walking in the opposite direction, to the right in this case. Again, so that means they're going to be somewhere over here. Now, as you can see, what I did here is that I, because it's one second later and they're walking at the same speed, uh, I made A further away, just to make it more realistic. Okay, so A is further away from the lamp than B so far. And once again, B is walking in this direction, continuing to walk like that. Okay, as A and B move away from the lamp, their shadows grow longer. Okay, so here is where the light is coming out of the lamp, right from the top. And so as it shines out, it's going to hit the person and it's going to make a shadow along the ground. So the way you want to draw this is that you draw sort of a diagonal line that goes to their head and it hits the ground. So this is their shadow, right? Uh, the light is shining like this and it's forming a shadow on the ground. And same with this one on this side, like that. Let me just clean this up a bit. Okay, so the length of A shadow is here, and then B shadow is a bit shorter because they're um, closer to the lamp. And as they move further away, the lamp, the shadow is going to be longer, as you can see. Uh, as A shadow will be longer as they move further to the left, and similarly with B, as they move further to the right, their shadow is going to be longer. Then it says, let A be the length of A shadow, B be the length of B shadow, and X be the distance, Y be the distance. So they're just naming variables. Um, you know, they're not introducing anything. They're just want to, giving names to things that are in this diagram. And our goal is to draw and label a picture that illustrates the scenario. So what we want to do is here is A shadow. That means that this length from here to here is going to be A. Similarly, this is B shadow in our diagram. And so I can label B like that. X is the distance A has walked. Well, in our diagram, A has walked from the lamp up to here. And so that is going to be our X, lowercase x here. Similarly, Y is the distance B has walked. That's going to be this distance in our diagram. Okay. And so this diagram now incorporates all the elements. A, X, Y, and B, as well as H and L that were originally introduced in the problem. And so this is the first part of the question right here uh, for two marks, which is this, your picture indicate all relevant lengths and the associated variables, right? So we indicated all relevant lengths and with their variables, and we drew and label a picture. Okay, so the next part here is where we talk about related rates. Right? As A and B walk within the lamp, both their shadows are getting longer, and we want to know whose shadow is changing length faster two seconds after A left the lamp. Okay, justify your answer. Now, this part of the end first, justify your answer, it seems like 
I were trying to give an explanation about, uh, you know, maybe some intuitive explanation. But actually, what the question really we need to do is just solve the problem. Just solve the related rates problem. Okay. That is going to be how we justify. Now, the question is, what are we actually trying to find? Well, we're trying to figure out whose shadow is changing length faster. So the rate of change of person A's shadow is how fast little a is changing. In other words, dA dt. That is the rate of change of A's shadow. And similarly, the rate of change of B's shadow is dB dt. Okay. So these are the two rates that we want to compare. Um, it turns out we're not going to be able to figure out the exact values of either of these, but we are going to be able to figure out the, you know, the relationship between them. And in particular, we want to find the relationship between them when t equals 2 seconds. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to be, with related rate problems, we need to know some rate that we're given, and that's going to use us, we can use that information to figure out the rate that we want to find, in this case, dABT and dBDT. Now, what's the rate we're given? We have to look back at the original problem. It says that both people are walking at a constant speed away from the street lamp. Okay. In the original problem, it says that A walks at a constant speed away from the street lamp, and B walks at the same speed in the opposite direction. Okay. This means, well, first off, what speed is it referring to? Well, the variable x here represents the distance traveled by A, and similarly y represents the distance traveled by B so far. So dx dt is the rate of change of this distance, the speed. How fast is x getting bigger, or how fast is y getting bigger? Okay. So in the question, we're given that dx dt is the same as dy dt. That's what we're going to use. Okay. Now, if you remember with related rates, we have to figure out some equation that relates the variables that we're given the rate of, like x and y, to the variables that we actually want to know the rate of, uh, a and b. So we're going to need to find some equation that relates x and y to a and b, and it's possibly going to involve l and h. L and H are constants, so they're not really variables. So just think of them as numbers, okay? We can use them also. Okay, so the way we're going to do this, we need to look at the actual diagram to figure out an equation that relates these two, with these variables. Now, to do this, we need to look more into the geometry of what's going on. And so what we're going to do, uh, we can look at this diagram, but I'm actually going to recreate it um, so that we can see the geometry clearer. So... I'm going to make this triangle. Here is the triangle. And here's the person A, and here's person B. And so that means uh, this side length is H. This is A here. This is X, Y, B, H, and this is L. Okay. Now it looks like we can see there's triangles here. And maybe you've seen it already so far that the, the key relationship we're going to do is we're going to use similar triangles in this problem. Now, maybe that's not clear how we do that so far. So I'm going to split it up even further. Okay. Um, one of the triangles that we're going to look at is this one here, this big triangle and this small triangle. Okay. These triangles are similar. And then the other one we're going to look at is on the right side. So we're going to have this big triangle and this small triangle. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at that here. So on the left side, we have, uh, let's see if we can draw this. L, H, A, and X. Okay. Now, by similar triangles, what can we say here? Well, what similar triangle says is that the ratio of corresponding sides are equal. Meaning if I take L over H, those are both the corresponding sides. One is the bigger height and one is the smaller height. That is the same as the ratio of the bigger base to the smaller base. The bigger base is actually A plus A X, right? It's not a uh, little X, it's its entire length. And so it's both pieces together. And the smaller base is just A. Okay, this is our relationship. Now, we want to know 
uh, we need to re rearrange this a little bit because we want to know the relationship between a and x. Those are our two variables, right? Remember, l and h are just constants. So a and x are the variables that we want. And actually, we want to know dA dt. So I'm actually going to solve this equation for a. Then I can take the derivative of that. So to solve this equation for a, I'm going to first cross multiply. So we're going to have l times a equals h times a plus x. Uh, then I'm going to distribute the h into both terms. So we have h a plus h x. Now to solve for a, there's a lot of variables here, but remember a and x are our only two variables. And if we want to solve for a, we need to move the a terms together. Okay, so we're going to have, I'm going to move this one to the left side to get this. Then I'm going to factor out the value of a and divide by that thing that's left over. So in the end, I'm going to have hx over l minus h. Okay. From here, we can take the derivative. Um, no problem. Uh, we're taking the derivative with respect to time, right? This is a related rates problem. A and x are both functions of time. A is getting bigger over time, the shadow is getting bigger, but also the person is walking away, so the x is getting bigger as well. Okay, so if I do that, let's take a look what happens. On the left hand side, we just get dA dt. Not much there. On the right hand side, well, notice here, remember, h and l are just constants. So this function is actually just h over l minus h times x, the variable. Meaning that when you take the derivative of it, all you get is the constant, the constant in front. And then by the chain rule, we're going to need to take the derivative of dx. So dx dt, sorry, the derivative of x, which is dx dt. So this is our relationship. Now here you can see it's a relationship between dA dt and dx dt, but we can't solve for dA dt. There's no numbers that we can plug in. And we don't know the value of dx dt either. So at this point, we have to stop. We don't, can't go any further. And this is where the other part of the triangle is going to come into play. And I'll draw it over here, uh, sort of separately, even though they're sort of joined together. Yeah. Uh, looks like this. Here is our height. And this triangle, we have h, l is the big height. Here we have y and b. And the similar triangles are going to be quite similar, actually. Unintentional pun there. We have the big height divided by the smaller height, the ratio of those two things, is equal to the big base divided by the smaller base. So we have y plus b over b. Okay. Then we're going, once again, going to solve for b, just like we did solve for a in the previous question, because again, we want to take the derivative of it. Uh, we want to take the derivative of b. So do that. I'll just go through here. Once again, it's just algebra here. So we're going to cross multiply. Distribute the h in. Move the two b terms to the same side. Factor out that b term. And then to isolate b, we divide by the l minus h. And once again, you can write this as h over l minus h times y to emphasize that h over l minus h is just a number, just a constant. Okay, then when you take the derivative of both sides, we're going to get db dt equals h over l minus h dy dt. Okay, now at this point, you might be wondering, how do we actually end up solving the problem? Remember, our goal is to figure out whose shadow is changing lengths faster. Well, the rate of change of the shadow here is this constant times dx dt, and the rate of change of the shadow here is this same constant times dy dt. Do you see it? dx dt and dy dt are the same, remember? And the original assumption of the problem was that these two rates of change are the same. Meaning, for example, I could say that d b d t is really just this. What does this mean? It means that d a b t and d b d t, the two rates of change we're interested in, are actually the same number. You can see they're the same 
expression. And so the actual final answer is that the two people are walking away or the, the, the rate of change of their shadow is changing length at the same rate. That is the final answer. Neither of them are faster than each other. Very interesting. Okay. That's everything for this question. It is kind of a uh, difficult related rates problem because there's, there's no explicit numbers that you actually have to plug in. If you found this helpful and you're interested in a full guide for this entire past exam, as well as other past exams, check out my full solution guide at the link below this video. It has step-by-step -step written explanations and solutions, and it can help you study for your exam more effectively and also save time. Thanks for watching. And I wish you the best of luck with your studies.